Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Christmas morning and happy Christmas to you all. Um, it won't be morning when you, some of you are watching this, but even so. Um, thank you David for joining us. Are you going to come do candles please? <laughs> um, we're going to start with our... Um, Mary and Joseph have arrived. The angels have proclaimed. The animals are watching. The star shines brightly. Christ child has now arrived. <coughs> Happy Christmas. Good morning, friends. Good morning. It's good to be here on Christmas Day and uh, so many things in our minds and our hearts too, but uh, we are gathered here this morning. Even though numbers are small, but we don't we don't normally count the God never count the numbers, uh, our hearts, our minds, uh, to come together. So uh, today is we are using this uh, order of service, make sure you have it in your hands. Uh, whenever there's a two hymns or two carols, rather, uh, we will listen to the music and just will read the words uh, within ourselves too. Um, before I proceed the service, I wanted just to show you the one uh, and, and so when me and Janet, uh, my wife, uh, we went to Holy Land, uh, I bought this one. Uh, it's a scarf uh, for the preaching store, uh, store here. This is, as you know, this is a Jerusalem cross. This is Jerusalem cross. Under the side of the Jerusalem cross, you can see the four crosses. Can you see four crosses? Is it all, is it all um, sewn in cross stitch? Yeah, cross stitch, yeah. Uh, four crosses. Yeah. So when we were when they were Bethlehem, uh, the place Jesus was born, uh, the story we were told the good news need to go the four corners of the world. As a reason, the four crosses uh, inside uh, the Jerusalem or Jerusalem cross here too. So it's a privilege for me to bear this one today because uh, uh, our trip to Honda really challenged me and was changed me too. Uh, in my own Christian spirituality in my life too. So I wonder, this is the first time we're having, so oh, here we go. Yeah. I haven't had any time to yet because no. soon after we landed, uh, lockdown started in March, so, so I'm just to be here, well, hopefully, so okay. Please follow this order of service called to worship. Jesus, born in Bethlehem, be born in us today so that we can share your eternal life. Jesus the Savior has come. Glory to God, his Father and ours. Oh, glory to God in the highest Amen. heaven and on Amen. earth in peace to all in whom we are Happy Christmas. Christmas. Christ has come. Let us worship with joy and love. So now we listen to music for the joy to the world. The Lord is come.
Christmas Day. Lord God, we celebrate your coming in the child, Christ child. We reflect on your giving and loving. As we worship you today, Father, fill us with your courage to be obedient to your will. As he was obedient to your will, to your eternal glory. You, Lord, are worthy of our praise and thanksgiving. Today we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes to dispel our darkness. Living God and light of the world, we praise you and thank you. A son is given, a child is born for us. Lord God, we celebrate your coming with our thanks and praise. Lord God, we celebrate your giving with our thanks and praise. Lord God, we celebrate again your loving with our thanks and praise. You are coming to us. You are giving us your Holy Spirit. You are loving us with our unconditional love. Living Lord and light of the world, we praise you today with the, those who are gathered here, our families and friends. We thank you, Father God. There are so many people gone into glory since we met last time here on Christmas Day. Father, we remember them and give our thanks to you for their life and witness. And also our church here, Haven Road, is a living light, Father God, for the community to see. We celebrate the birth of your son along with the millions and millions and millions of people around the world. We today we celebrate in our family here, small family. Father, we thank you for sending the son for us to be released and from our sinful nature to come to you as your children, as the sons of God. Father, bless our worship and give us your thoughts and guide us, Father God, the way for us to celebrate and also observe the meaning of Christmas today. We have a video ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in, strip, in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. There were shepherds in that part of the country who were spending their night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour has been born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is, with, he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. 
Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angels had told them. Thank you so much indeed. Um, how many times we read that lessons um, the Christmas um, story always comes as a new message every year. And it was written so many years ago, but still coming to us. Uh, refreshment and also strength too. I know um, here in Road, you have a reputation uh, Christmas time to reflect how many angels and how many animals gathered at the nativity scene or the manger. I always had me the way you organize the Christmas time. And also you to a uh, particular selecting preachers to focus about it's a hard job, isn't it? <laughs> well, they, they love it. They, we're very blessed. We uh, absolutely. They absolutely. love it. E exactly. And what I'm trying to say here, we always focus about the main, uh, the focus about the Christmas characters, uh, focus about the um, uh, shepherds and wise men, and also the all the common sheep and how many people gathered there. I only, always see only one donkey in the main just seeing a Christmas card. So I, I don't know what happened to his or her partner. So when I heard this reading, um, for this uh, usual traditional reading, I always remember the words what the shepherd as my first uh, favorite character in the nativity scene. The word uh, shepherd said to us, and I said to the people gathered there, let us go now. Now, let us go now uh, to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. So, I found this particularly, that is what shepherds are said after the angels uh, had left them and gone into heaven, the Bible says. It wasn't very enough to just hear the good news. It wasn't enough to just receive the birth announcement. Uh, somewhere deep within they wanted, they wanted to be a part of this thing that has taken place. I found this an extraordinary, isn't it? That imagine those days, I'm talking about, we are talking about all those years ago, they, they want to be a witness of being there rather than doing something. So they had to go and see. So they left their fields and went to the manger and in so um, doing, they moved from the event of Jesus' birth uh, to the experience of his birth. They made the Christmas story uh, their own story. It's not his story, their own story. So that is what I hope we will do uh, uh, this morning. I want us to be, all of us here, uh, six, seven of us here, that's a good number. I don't want to just, to just talk about Bethlehem, like I stole, I bought it from Bethlehem. I want us to go there physically, spiritually, and uh, mentally, and socially to, to see the, the child. I don't want us to figure out the meaning of this thing has uh, taken place. I, I want us to find something, some meaning, in that this thing that has taken place, I want us to move uh, from the event of Christmas uh, to the experience of Christmas. So it happened, the history, uh, uh, explain to us what happened. Uh, it was foretold uh, 800 years ago before Jesus Christ came. It was predicted what's going to happen. It was prepared by John the Baptist too. So let me start by asking uh, your question. I'm not too early morning question, mm -hmm. answer session. So what is your Christmas story? What is your, your, your every one of us story? What is your Christmas story? Leaving the, the account, the biblical account, uh, the reading, uh, Luke and Gospel reading, uh, just park that one, one side. What is my Christmas story today? So what is your Christmas story today? So I'm going to give a, give a turn. Uh, don't, don't speak more than one few seconds, okay? <laughs> Peter, you go first. So what is your Christmas story? Your story. Peter's story. Le don't touch any bad biblical event. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you're asking. 
So what everybody has a story about understanding who's the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, everybody are looking at their personal story. As a Peter yourself, what is your personal story? Well, how do I understand the Christmas story, or how has God revealed himself to me? Yeah, for you, for you. Don't worry about church, don't worry about anybody, for you. For That's me, all about Christmas. I think the word would be gently. All through my life, God has been there, gently nudging. No big revelation, no... You're almost like the Christmas story. A child quietly comes into the world. The world is oblivious to it. Um, I think for me, it is gentle nudging. And you look back and you see sort of great changes in your life, which at the time is just a nudge. And another nudge. And I, th I think that's my story. Okay. Five times, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, mm. You don't need to repeat that one. No, it's all. No, you can't no, say no, it all. No. So everybody is individual, unique. I think. Uh, what is your good story for you? I think, conversely, mine is probably angels. Um, because, angels. Because there are very definite people who have proclaimed and challenged and, you know, along the way, you see what I mean? So, so okay, okay. there are definite messages that have, have come. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. So that's, that's fair enough. That's very good. Uh, Jenny, yes? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy, is it? Tell us the story. Don't touch your friend, don't. I don't know that I can, if it directly like, relates to Christmas story, but I think Jesus has given me strength that I wouldn't have on my own account. Okay, that's that's that's, that's a good one. How about you can't repeat that one because you are you are unique. My neighbour was um, <coughs> my first Sunday school teacher in Hall Church, Methodist Church, a few years ago. I suppose about three or five, but and she used to take me every Sunday. And um, sadly, she's not here. Mm. Okay, that's Thank you so much indeed. Um, when you visit uh, your own uh, Christmas story, for me, it is, uh, I'm not asking about our family tradition we normally do on Christmas Day, or the gifts you exchange, 
or before and after, or the food you eat, the food you put on the table, or the way you will celebrate Christmas. I'm not asking you to tell me the Christmas story that I quoted in the Bible, we all heard beautiful read by Peter and Christine. We are asked, I am asked to share our, our own story, Christmas story. When have you, like a shepherd, gone to Bethlehem to see that this thing that has taken place? I'm not talking about pilgrimage or the pilgrims that travel to Holy Land like we did. I'm not talking about that one. I want to hear about, I want to reflect about the time when you knew your life to be the manger of Christ's birth. The reason I asked earlier about it seems so hard sometimes, your Christmas story or my Christmas story is because I think we often leave ourselves after the Christmas story. We only put the characters and personalities and families and everybody on the list. Where are we put ourselves, like a David Jeb in my list, where he is in the, the manger? Where is Kirsten in the manger list? What about you and me as collective body in the community, the church? Do we name ourselves as essential characters or participants in the story? And sometimes I wonder if we have become a forgotten uh, the characters of Christmas story, I sometimes wonder if we focus on the on the particular of Jesus' birth uh, that the event happened all those years ago. Such a, a degree, and we commit ourselves from the story. When the, when that happens, uh, we deny ourselves uh, the experience of Christmas, and Christmas is just another event in history. We might as well sing happy birthday as we sing, O oh, come, all ye faithful. Let's, just, let's not do that. Let's not limit the beauty of the, the breadth and the depth of the Christmas story to the historical uh, uh, particular things of Jesus' birth, birth, what happened. It is bigger than that. A few pounds worth of the human flesh have uh, become worried. The word transformed the world and still transforming the world. Not hundred, thousand, millions transforming people. It is bigger than our imagination. It is bigger than our, our comprehension. It is more than that. Jesus' birth happened within the particular set of circumstances. Animals and angels and shepherds and wise men the character, the Christmas card, is actually describing about what happened. A, a particular place happened, a particular time it happened, a, a, a woman was chosen by the, uh, the power of God, and does it mean his birth is limited to only particular manger, the scenery only? Or, or contained only within the, those circumstances or, or the Jewish uh, race and, or race and uh, tradition? This doesn't mean that this is only limited for one country or one church. It means, Father, that we must look for an experience if birth in a particular circumstances of our own life here in the world. Whereas God has born in the right hearts. Christ is born in the particularities of life, or oh, his and ours are then, then and now, entirely different culture. Entirely different circumstances, entirely different challenges he faced and we are facing right now. So where do we go to this thing that has taken place? What does it look like now, 2020? The start of the circumstances of your life, or my life. What does the manger of your life hold? Are we limiting the, our manger only for my family, only for my church members? Or am I limiting the manger scenery is only for my race, my tradition, or my nationalities? Hope, the fear and joy, sorrow, where are they? How do I stand, standing and looking at the baby, but I am a present? But maybe a grief and loss lie at the center of your life, or our life, the world's life. Maybe it's a Thanksgiving 
and an abundance. Maybe it is an emptiness, the lack of meaning, or darkness that lie in your manger. The sorrow and, and, and the grief we carry uh, within our mind and behind our back of our mind all the time. That is our manger for us to see Christ lying in a manger in our darkness. As you are holding a guilt or resentments or regrets in this last year, we are coming to the end of this year, is your manger full of pain? Or what does it hurt? What concern fill your life? What lies uh, in the cradle of your life? Whatever it is, whatever your circumstances are in this day, that is the manger in which you will find the Christ child. The manger of your life and manger of Christ are, are not separated. We don't want to put the Christ and the in a manger all the time, a childlike the form and the image on a small baby lying in a manger, but we don't want to keep the manger like that, the, the baby like that all the time. Because we are human, we need to grow. <coughs> That's the reason I found this, um, one of the Hindu doctors, a team, medical team doctor, is working in uh, King George Hospital, our, our, one of the closest uh, hospitals we have. Her name is Dr. Kamda, he's one of my close friends, and. Uh, we were studying together in, back in Sri Lanka, he's a, a lead in the medical team at King George. He, he said to me, I, walk, I see the Christ child in every patient walking through, uh, through the ward. I see Christ, the image, the people, those who are crying for the recovery. But the, the, I see the people, Christ, the image in my, in my staff team, those who are putting their life on the risky point on the front line to help others. As a being a non-Christian uh, doctor or person, uh, telling me about CSP, the manger, not necessarily the Christmas card or the church nativity scene, but the school nativity play. So you see the Christ image, those who are crying for the healing. Those who are, even though her she said to me last night, she talked to me around 11.30 after the first service, and she said to me, for me, David, uh, Christ child is born for me when I cry, when I hear, the patients are crying. The last, they are, they are struggling with breath, the breathing problem. There are so many people will lost the the COVID board. I he was in charge. He's still in charge. The manger of our life. See, maybe she never had a Christ love through her life, but it's a working life. She recognized Christ is walking with her all the time. How about me and uh, you and me? From that one manger, we all are given a new life. One main story, given new life, new hope, uh, new possibilities. You see that uh, this 2020 was a hard time for all of us since March. Uh, we were asked so many questions, where did we go from here, what is next? But COVID-19 did damage so many things, economy, our wealth and everything. But COVID-19 also brought people closer to God. COVID-19 also challenged people like us, Christians, to what we are doing. COVID-19 also challenged for the birth of Jesus Christ, meaning, the different meaning for me to buy. What's my story about the manger where Jesus was born for us? Therefore, I want to just to finish with small thoughts this morning. What is your story? What is my story? The story is ongoing story. This is no single Christmas story today. There are endless number of Christmas stories and they are happening all the time. This is not a story that happened 2000 years ago. There is happening today in 2020. There are at least as many Christmas stories are today. And there are people creating stories and living stories. Remember what the angel told the shepherd. I'm bringing you good news of great joy of all people. Not some people, not just the good people, not the believing people only, not the Christian only. All people, these are all people, everyone inclusive. We can't isolate people. The church can't tell them, you are not belonging here. No one is left out in the manger. All are welcome. The manger is open. So they tell me, when you have been to Bethlehem, 
What do you see? What do you experience? What is your Christmas story? Christina Fossati is one of my favorite poets, hymn writer. I know if I want to read the last verse. This is my favorite um, uh, carol. Hopefully, I found this that one. I couldn't find this. Krishna Rossetti was telling very clearly about, I'll probably say that when I find the number. Well, in the bridge, do you know the number? No, I'm saying the same thing, right? Yeah, I got to, yeah, in the bridge. Yeah, he got two from my four. I want to just use my um, favorite, and also very meaningful character. I would like to read that one, the last verse. Krishna Rosati was uh, explaining about what can I give him, poor as I am. If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I, what I can give him, give him my heart. The heart is not a place where you can see the message. You act on it. You are living the word about Christ calling us to be born again into our hearts and minds. I want to invite you to join with me in a few seconds silence. What is my story? What is my personal story? The story I need to live every day. The new story. The new life-giving story for all of us. time of our prayer, I want to bring uh, prayers for the people, those who are in our church, in our community, in our world too. In this Christmas story, what is my story? Living in a community, people are crying, people are weeping, for them to feel belonging, for them to feel careful, for them to feel like loud. Lord God, as we celebrate your coming, uh, we are aware of the needs of many people and bring our prayers for them to you. Lord God, we pray for people who, for whom Christmas is a time to celebrate your coming, for your church, for the body of your son, for all the ministers, all the preachers, all the lay people, for all who will worship you today in a different part of the world, different part of the country, in a different part of our circuit today for all who are away from their loved ones because the COVID made them impossible for them to come in together. Lord God, we pray for people for whom Christmas is simply a reminder of what they don't have. For those who live alone and we have no one to share, and especially David, for children who have run away from home and will spend Christmas on the streets. We pray for the people who have lost a loved one are painfully reminded of the loss at this time of the year. For people who feel they are failing their families because they cannot keep up with the material and commercial aspects of the season. Lord God, we, we all people find hope for the future and discover the support of others in their time of need. Finally, we pray for ourselves. What is my story? What is your Christmas story? Father God, we, we failed so many times to keep this child only inside the manger. Father, the, the good news need to be shared within or beyond the church walls. Father, we failed in so many ways to just to isolate, limit and put a separate wall within the people, in our community, in our country, around the world. Lord, give us your true gratitude for all that we have and awareness of that is a painful and difficult time for, for many people. Homeless, people those who are displaced, people those who don't have anybody to turn to. Be Father, God, we remember them in our prayers. 
Their story is our Christmas story. Our Christmas story should be their Christmas story too. Because you came not only for the Christians, you came for the whole world, every one of, them, one of us, every part of the world, or for the four corners of the world, you spread the message, people to come to you, God. 2020 Christmas, a new Christmas story, finding our place in a manger, where I can put myself in the manger scenery, for the nativity scenery next to the shepherd, or next to the donkey, or next to Jesus, or next to Mary, or next to Joseph, or next to the star. It's not an object, Father, but we are talking about our spiritual journey. We are traveling with you, God. We need to put our yourself into our hearts. For like the Christian Arosa said, I give my heart for you to transform us, first us and the world. Therefore, we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, we are going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Uh, we are going to listen to the last hymn uh, before the blessings. Uh, for come, all you faithful, you joyful, and fine.
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was mouthing it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just think that all my people are the same. So, anyway, we are, I think God's freedom is more than our limitation. So, the, we, some of us, as you know, we were doing the Bible study at when Bible study called uh, A Strange Christmas. You might have this uh, book, uh, booklet, we are doing the uh, Christmas, A uh, Strange Christmas. At the I end, um, is an uh, author, is uh, Chris Kantaya. The, uh, at the end, uh, Christmas Blessing after the session four, uh, Strange Wisdom. So I'm going to read that one as a part of our blessing for today. Just to, uh, keep a piece of silence for a few seconds. Friends are loving one another as brothers and sisters. Those who are in, those who are out. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. I repeat again, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, by so doing some people have shown the hospitality to angels without knowing it. May the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and your families. Whatever we do today will be counted in our journey together to go to Bethlehem to see the Christ within us, in our hearts and minds too. Amen. Well, thanks to every one of you and, uh, and uh, thank you Peter, thank you Justin, everybody and uh, for your support, for your blessing too. I will slowly disappear from you <laughs> <laughs> to the Thank next you. service. Thank you.